Welcome back friends and followers. In my last video I gave you a simple trick to unbind keys in the control settings and save a lot of time. This time I'm doing some kind of frequently observed issues and solutions. Yes, I'm a genius. I just invented that term because you know you cannot have enough abbreviations in aviation. Anyway, I have watched a few videos about this sim recently and what I discovered was pretty much shocking to overdramatize a little bit. Many users are frustrated with this sim, particularly when it comes to the settings, how to use certain buttons and knobs and other things in the sim. That's why I decided to step in, hopefully shed some light on the darkness by explaining a few key points. This video will be split into chapters, so feel free to jump into the chapter that is most relevant to you. So let's start with the buttons and knobs, and for this we will jump right into the cockpit of the A330. Wait, but how do you actually enter the cockpit? This is very easy, you have two options. Option number one, you have to point the mouse cursor to this door right here, and you need to be close. So when it's flashing you know it's working and I can click that. Option number two is even easier because you don't need to be very close to the airplane. You can do that wherever you are. So if you are moved away from the airplane, the only thing you're gonna need to do is hit the button to take control of the character. If you don't have this button assigned, well, then you would need to go to the settings, controls, select the device of your liking. I selected my keyboard and then search for take control. This one right here, I have set it up to my home button. If I press the home button, no matter where I am, I will directly get back into the cockpit. And let me show you that. Now I'm very far away. Let me just hit my home button. Boom. I am inside. Okay, so the next topic is these buttons and knobs. They are highlighted in blue. As you can see, they are flashing in blue. Some people are annoyed with that. This is very easy to set up. So you're gonna go to the settings again. Go to the flight interface section. Scroll down a little bit until you reach cockpit camera and select cockpit interaction to set it to legacy and then you are good to go let's get back again now as you can see now you have these arrows to push and pull same as here push and pull you can use your mouse cursor if it's set it up like this to increase or decrease the speed or anything that you want to set up and by the way if you were wondering how it is actually possible to push or pull the knobs it's right mouse click for push and middle mouse click for pull it's always been like this even in 2020 they didn't change that so right click for push and middle button for pull all right done with the buttons and knobs let's get back to these settings there is something i saw on discord too and that is the key bindings and creating new profiles so this one right here 2024 is the default profile of the sim let's select the assigned keys and now if you want to change something in that default profile it won't let you until you create a new profile which is fine and let's call it test all right now if you want to change anything right here and this is a catch where people fall very very much and very fast into that we just created an airplane profile which is called test if you now change something in general in the general category obviously it will prompt you again because when you take a look, general controls is still assigned to the default keyboard profile. So if I now unbind this one, it will prompt you to create a new profile. You will think, oh, not again, but it's not the same. It's a different category. It's a general one. Let's call it test two. And now I can assure you whenever you change anything right here, 
it won't prompt you again never ever it will not happen until you maybe get to a specific control which i couldn't find until today i even watched a lot of videos about these settings no one could ever tell what specific controls actually are maybe we will find out in the future let's wait maybe they will add some specific controls i thought that these specific controls are related to the sensitivity settings and let me just demonstrate that to you all right so i have selected my side stick and as you can see down below we have the default profile for general controls and the default profile for airplane controls now the only thing i would think of to be a specific control would be the hardware setting and if you ask why just think of a Cessna 172 and an Airbus A330. Both airplanes should definitely not have the same sensitivity settings for obvious reasons. Let's select hardware settings and let's tweak that down. Now you will be prompted to create a new profile. If you ask why, I just explained it in the previous chapter. This is because the default side stick profile was selected and if you tweaking anything or changing anything in a default profile you will be always prompted to create a new profile anyway let's call it test and now let's set this up to minus 0.25 same thing for this one and same thing for this one now let's go back now you would think okay i have created my specific control now because i changed the sensitivity settings but it is not the case for some reason this is now under general controls now if you want to have different sensitivity settings for each aircraft you would of course let's rename that let me show you a330 so this profile right here is now the profile with the sensitivity settings we just set up you can of course apply that to all aircraft but it doesn't make any sense like i said cessna and airbus different airplanes let's change the aircraft and let's select the 172 now we have selected the cessna 172 now let's see if we select this A330 profile, we will have, of course, this sensitivity settings we just set up. Now, if you want to change that, you would maybe either select the default profile and then go to hardware settings and tweak that down even more. Let's call it 172 for simplicity. Let's say I want the Cessna to be minus 0.6 and minus 0.6 for this axis and for this one too. All right, now we have for the Cessna the sensitivity settings as you can see. And if you want to change it, you would definitely select the A330. So this is one way to have specific sensitivity settings for each airplane if you want this to be for our airplanes of course you would apply it to all airplanes but as i said before i don't think that it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense to do that i guess all right i found specific controls and this was even by coincidence I have selected the 172 and if you go down 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 to this list to the bottom you have not categorized and if you select that extend this one here it is specific airplane controls for the Cessna 172 Skyhawk now I don't know what these things do all lights toggle door left toggle cabin light decrease cabin light increase and stuff like that I don't even know if this Cessna 
can do these things in real life. For example, I saw one thing like taxi light decrease and taxi light increase. I don't know if that's even a feature in the airplane. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I found specific controls which were unfortunately not hardware and sensitivity settings. Anyway, this is it for this chapter. Let's go to the next one. All right, so in this chapter, let's talk about the 2020 key bindings and in general which key bindings to use in the 2024 sim so if you were using the default key bindings in 2020 and did not change a single thing you can just select these two presets the 2020 transversal and the 2020 planes for these two categories and just leave it like that you will have no differences between 2020 and 2024. I did not obviously check for all the controls because there are a lot of controls specifically for the keyboard but I'm pretty sure that they are identical otherwise they wouldn't had them imported in the 2024 sim. On the other hand if you are like me and did set up your own custom key bindings in 2020 then these two presets the 2020 presets will not help you out you will have to set up your own custom key bindings for 2024 the same way as you did in 2020 with a couple of additions like the camera and the movement of the character and other stuff but if you do that make sure to create a new profile based on the 2024 presets. I have a video about that, why this is the case. I will put a link in the description. It's a very short video and it already helped a lot of people. The downside of course, if you decide to use your own custom key bindings, you will have to do a lot of unbinding and this unbinding will be much easier if you do that based on the 2024 preset. Now for the next chapter, this is an issue I uh, had myself. Let's go into some airport. Hopefully the plane will move in this snowy area. Let's find out. All right, we are now in the cockpit of the A330. Let me show you the problem that I mentioned. So it is the tiller option. Let's select rudder controls tiller, no. And let's select auto tiller disconnect, no. Now watch at my tiller. My tiller is now moving. And if I use my rudders, the tiller is not moving. So if you go outside and zoom in a little bit, on the nose wheel now i'm using my tiller as you can see it is animated and it's moving and now i'm using my rudder rudder left and rudder right as you can see now let's release the parking brake and get the plane to move a little bit then you can see the issue so the plane moves now and now i am doing full right tiller but the plane isn't moving full left tiller and the plane isn't moving so the tiller here is buggy and I guess it's not working as expected if I now do full right rudder the plane will move slightly to the right and of course for left rudder the plane will move slightly to the left now let's stop and let's get back to the cockpit let's select yes and yes for now both of these settings now if i move my tiller of course it will move still and if i use my rudder my tiller will move too so this rudder now controls the tiller and let's see how it is from the outside let's move again now let me do full left as you can see it is now controlling the uh, nose wheel and full right it is now controlling the nose wheel as well 
Now what is this auto tiller disconnect? Well that means that if you reach 80 knots or above your rudder inputs won't be tiller inputs anymore they will be rudder inputs. Let's just demonstrate that by pretending to take off Now just watch, this is now tiller movement, although I am using my rudder, okay? As you can see, it's very sensitive. Now we reached 80 knots, now the tiller is disconnected, as you can see, it's not moving anymore. And as you can see, the movement of the rudder is slightly less sensitive than the tiller one. Let's just stop and pretend we do an aborted takeoff. Don't mind this flickering, this is the frame gen mod. Yeah, this is uh, the case with the tiller. I addressed that because I saw a couple of uh, posts about that in Discord. Alright, that was it. So, to summarize, I guess it's still uh, a bug that the uh, tiller is not controlling the nose wheel correctly all right that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i might find other issues after making this video i might do a new video about them and in case if you're wondering where the progress bar is it's actually not the loading screen it's actually a video you know you can find it right here and use it as a screensaver if you want i don't think that anyone wants to see that again after the horrible experience we had on the first date so yeah thanks for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel to always be up to date and if you have any further issues you can write them down below in the comments thanks for watching and see you in the next one